The Time Lord archetype, known in Japan as the Time Machine Gods, is an archetype of level 10 fairy type monsters of various attributes, except for Dark. They were used by the final antagonist of the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D series, Zone. The Time Lords are based on the 10 attributes that make up the Tree of Life. But what is the Tree of Life? Well, the Tree of Life is almost like a roadmap to our own souls. Each of the spheres, known as Sephiroths, are the individual energies of God. Mastery of these energies will allow a person to become one with God himself. The lines between the spheres are pathways, which allow you to reach each of the energies. At the very top of the tree is the number one, which represents God consciousness. Whereas at the other end of the spectrum, at the very bottom, we have the number 10, which represents us, aka the physical plane of existence. The goal of the tree is to, through study and meditation, ascend up it, mastering each of the elements and eventually achieving God conscious, fulfilling the true purpose of life. So then each of the time laws reflect an element of the tree of life, as well an archangel that represents them. So how about we take a look at each one and what they represent by going from the bottom and working our way to the top. Starting with Sandion, the Time Lord. Keep in mind, I'm going to butcher a lot of names in this. I apologize. Now, this monster represents the Archangel Sandalphon and represents the 10th and bottommost position of the Tree of Life, the Malkuth. Malkuth means kingdom. It is associated with the realm of Earth and relates to the physical world, the planets and the solar system. Though looking at the tree, you would think that the Malkuth is seen as the lowest of the Tree of Life branches. It, it's also kind of really important since it has the most potential of all the others. You start from here and this is your way to sort of making your way up. So yeah. You know. The Tree of Life and its Sephiroths also are associated with the human body. Sometimes each one of these is related to an individual part of the body. The Malkuth is represented by the feet, since it is part of the physical realm and your feet make contact with the earth. There you go. Fun fact, this monster does not actually have a real world counterpart. However, it was used in the anime and in the game Yu-Gi-Oh! Tag Force 6. Did you know as well that this is one of only two Time Lord monsters to not have both zero attack and zero defense, with the other one being Cephalon, the ultimate Time Lord. Now, rather than reading out the full effect of all of the Time Lord cards, I'm just going to sort of summarize their unique effect, but I'll just quickly let you know what all the Time Lord cards share in their effects, which is they cannot be special summoned from the deck. If you control no monsters, you can normal summon this card without tripping. It cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. You take no battle damage from attacks involving this card, and once per turn during your standby phase, shuffle this card into the deck. This monster's unique effect is, at the end of the battle phase, if this card battled, inflict 2000 damage to your opponent. You'll notice as well that the cards that don't appear in the real world's effects are very broken and strong, so just keep that in mind if they seem a bit OP. Gabrion the Time Lord. Now this monster represents the Archangel Gabriel and represents the ninth position on the Tree of Life, the Yasod. Yasod means foundation, by which it means it is the foundation upon which God has built the world. It also serves as a transmitter between the Sephiroth above and the reality below. Basically, it is the intermediate between the divine power above and the human world. This monster's name, Gabrion, is derived from the angel Gabriel. Gabriel is known for ensuring non-human entities do not interfere with humans, which is somewhat reflected in this card's effect to remove cards from the opponent's field, which could hinder your own monsters from play, so uh, it's a stretch, but it's kind of there. However, to be a bit more specific, this monster's unique effect is, after it destroys a monster by battle, it can target one card the opponent controls and shuffle it into the deck. Again, this monster is not featured in the real world, but does exist in the anime and the Tag Force 6 game. And if we take a close look at this monster's face, it has been said that it kind of resembles Dexter from Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal but I'll let you be the judge of that. Raphion, the Time Lord. Now this monster represents the Archangel Raphael and represents the eighth position on the Tree of Life, the Hod. Hod means majesty, splendor, or glory. All of the Sephiroth are associated with different parts of the body. The Hod and the Nasash, which we'll be covering a little bit later, are associated with the two legs of a person. The legs are seen as a means for a person's activity, while the hands and arms are seen as the main instruments of 
action. As such, the legs help bring a person to the place where he wishes to execute an action with his arms. So you can kind of see how these two things work together. Now this monster's unique effect is that after it destroys a monster by battle, it can inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of the monster it battled. This monster is also another one of the ones that doesn't have a real world counterpart. And ironically, the archangel that this monster is based on, Raphael, is an entity that can perform all manner of healings. Whereas contradictorily, this monster does the opposite and instead inflicts damage. So... Hmm, maybe not. Halon, the Time Lord. This monster represents the Archangel Haniel and represents the seventh position on the Tree of Life, the Nitsash. Which I know I'm butchering, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Nitsash means eternity or victory. Nitsash is basically about endurance, the fortitude and patience to follow through on your passions. As we mentioned before, it is paired with Hod. The Nitsash is about showing leadership. The ability to rally others to a cause and motivate them to act. While the HUD is the community, the ability to do the footwork needed to follow through on ideas and make them happen in the Nasash. This monster's unique effect is that after it destroys a monster by battle, it can inflict damage to the opponent equal to the difference between the player's life points and theirs if the player's life point is lower. A very unique effect. Pretty cool. I'd love to see that in the real world. I don't know if it'd be broken. Probably be broken, right? Yeah, definitely. For the fact that the Archangel is based on, Haniel is generally associated with the planet Venus. It is said to take the appearance of a woman, hence the appearance of this card's face. This is also the only Time Lord with more than one set of limbs, having four arms. Michion, the Time Lord. This monster represents the Archangel Michael and represents the sixth position on the Tree of Life, the Tiferet. Tiferet is interesting because it is the force that integrates the Sephiroth of the Chest, which means compassion, and Gavora, which means strength. These two forces are respectively expansive, giving, and restrictive, receiving. Either of them without the other could not manifest the flow of divine energy. They must be balanced in perfect proportion by balancing compassion and discipline. It's basically about finding a balance of knowing when to give and when to receive things properly. This balance also extends to the Nisach and Hod in a similar manner. In the case of Hod, it can be seen as the intellect, whereas the Nisach, it can be seen as the emotion. So you need these two things in the right balance. Now this monster's unique effect is that after it destroys a monster by battle, it can halve your opponent's life points. <laughs> That's a pretty cool effect early game, holy hell. Based on this monster's effect, it could be said that the Archangel that it represents, Michael, is known to lend strength to overcome a difficult challenge. So, by this logic, it could be said that the greater the challenge, i.e. The, the higher the life points are, the more strength is lent by the monster, i.e. the greater the life point reduction. That makes sense, right? And this card is the only Time Lord with no limbs, having wings instead. Camion, the Time Lord. Now, this monster represents the Archangel Camiel and represents the fifth position on the Tree of Life, the Gavora. Gavora means strength. Gavora is associated in the soul, with the power to restrain one's innate urge to bestow goodness upon others, when the recipient of that good is judged to be unworthy and liable to misuse it. So it's about knowing when someone's a bit of a knobhead and saying like, no, I won't give you that last cookie. <laughs> As we talked about before, Chest and Gavora act together to create an inner balance in the soul's approach to the outside world. While, let's say, the right arm of Chest operates to draw others near, the left arm of Gavora reserves the option of repelling those deemed undeserving away. It is also worth noting that this monster's archangel interpretation, Camiel, is an archangel of strength, courage, and war. Very fitting. Fun fact, this Time Lord is real as well. It's been made in the real world. And its unique ability is, after it destroys a monster by battle, shuffle one card the opponent controls into the deck and inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Neither player can respond to this activation. Sadion, the Time Lord. This monster represents the Archangel Zadkiel and represents the fourth position on the Tree of Life, the Chest, which I swear to God I'm not pronouncing right. I want to call it the Cheesed. Chest means kindness or love. This one is basically the opposite of the previous one, which we have kind of touched on. Whereas Gavora was all about recognizing when people aren't worthy of your goodness, Chest is there to draw those in that do deserve it. Fittingly, with this monster representing kindness and its archangel Zadkiel also being an archangel of benevolence and mercy, it is perfect that its unique effect also reflects this as when it destroys a monster by battle, it can make the player's life points become 
4,000 if it is less than 4,000. So yeah. Also, this card's effect to gain life points is similar to the effect of Lifestream Dragon. This is interesting because both Sadie on the Time Lord and Lifestream Dragon were both used in the same duel, and they both actually managed to pull their effects off. And that duel, of course, was between Yusei and Zone. Zafion the Time Lord. This monster represents the Archangel Zafkiel and represents the third position on the Tree of Life, the Biner. Biner means understanding. It's the mastery of contemplation, basically. It is likened to a palace of mirrors that reflects wisdom, increasing and multiplying it in an infinite way. Basically, it means you use your own wisdom and intelligence to develop your own ideas. This stage of the tree is associated with the feminine. It is even stated that an extra measure of Bina was given to women, which seems unfair. <laughs> This is reflected in this card's artwork, as Zafion is depicted as a woman. Also, this monster's unique effect is that after it destroys a monster by battle, it can shuffle all spell and traps the opponent controls into the deck. Also, the player can draw one card if it is sent from the field to the graveyard. Based on this effect, it is a little bit of a stretch, but the name of this card is of course derived from Zafkiel the Archangel. Zafkiel is related to the beginning and ending of things, which could be reflected by this card's effect of removing the opponent's spell and trap cards, so the ending of them, and then replenishing cards in the hand at the uh, at the beginning. It's a stretch. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize for that one. Lazion, the Time Lord. This monster represents the Archangel, Raziel, and represents the second position of the Tree of Life, the Chokma. Chokma means wisdom. It is associated in the soul with the power of intuitive insight. It is basically the power to spontaneously extract information from the super conscious realm. Whoa. The wisdom of Chokma also implies the ability to look deeply at aspects of reality and to break it down and uncover its truth. If applied to the human body, it is associated with the right eye and is described as the divine image. This monster's unique effect is that after it destroys a monster by battle, it can shuffle all cards from the opponent's graveyard into the deck. Also, once per turn, inflict a thousand damage to the opponent when they draw a card. Since this monster is based on the Archangel Raziel, it was said that Raziel attempted to guide Adam and Eve back to the Garden of Eden. This could be referenced by Razion's effect of returning monsters to the deck back from the graveyard. And this is the only Time Lord with a body part that is not metal, namely the fire on its shoulders. Meteon, the Time Lord. This monster represents the Archangel Metatron and represents the topmost position on the Tree of Life, the Keter. Keter meaning crown. A very fitting name since this one is at the top of the tree, it is likened to the crown and is worn above the head. Now this Sephiroth being referenced as a crown is important because the crown is worn above the head. The crown therefore refers to things that are above the mind's ability of comprehension. Basically, everything we've covered so far are all a part of the body. And I don't fully understand it myself, but I'm going to give it a good stab at trying to explain it. The Kita represents the desire to come forth into the varied life of being. Or, in other words, this Sephiroth contains all the potential for content. It contains no content itself, however, and is therefore called nothing, or the air that cannot be grasped. Okay, that's still really, really vague. So, super basically, it is desire to bring the world into being, meaning absolute compassion. Why not? This monster's unique effect is that after it destroys a monster by battle, it can return all other monsters on the field to the hand and inflict 300 damage to the opponent for each card returned. The effect of this card to return monsters and inflict damage for each one is a downgraded version of the anime effect of Kamion, the Time Lord. And this card is the first Time Lord monster to be released in the OCG and TCG. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice that we've covered 10 monsters, which are the 10 spots on the Tree of Life. However, there is actually a secret one, Cephalon, the ultimate Time Lord. Now, this monster represents the Archangel God and represents the secret position on the Tree of Life, the Da'at. Da'at means knowledge. 
This Sephiroth is a mystical state, where all 10 Sephiroth in the Tree of Life are united as one. You'll notice that this Sephiroth is not actually usually shown on the Tree of Life because not everyone can achieve it. It's effectively a state when all the Sephiroth are in a perfected state of infinite sharing. This slot on the tree can only be seen by humans who become self-giving through altruism. However, humans who are selfish cannot see it and for them its benefits seem hidden. Cephalon, the ultimate Time Lord's effect is, it cannot be normal summoned or set, it must be special summoned from your hand by having 10 or more monsters in your graveyard, and cannot be special summoned by other ways. Once per turn, you can special summon one level 8 or higher fairy type monster from your hand or graveyard, but its effects are negated, also its attack becomes 4000. So this card is named after the Sephiroth, the alternate name for the Tree of Life. This name was also referenced in the anime, when Cephalon the Ultimate Time Lord was about to be summoned, a tree structure appeared with the other Time Lord monsters. This reference is maintained in the card game as well. Despite not all of the Time Lords having actually been released yet, the requirement of having 10 or more monsters in the graveyard is a reference to the Tree of Life itself. This card is the only Time Lord monster whose artwork shows it from an angle other than from the front. This card, Odin, the father of the Azir, and Arcana Force X, the Light Ruler, are the strongest fairy type monsters in the OCG and TCG. And finally, fun fact, despite being in possession of the most powerful of the four duelists from the future in Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, this is the only one of the signature cards that is not a level 12. All the others, TG Halberd Cannon, Malefic Truth Dragon, and Mechlord Astro Mecha Nickel are all level 12. We might as well mention all the support cards. We have Time Maiden, Zone Trap A, Zone Trap B, Zone Monster C, Zone Monster D, and Zone Monster E. And with that, guys, that's another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Trivia done. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Would you like to see more of these cards brought into the real world? Are any of you savvy with the Tree of Life? This was my first time learning about it. I found it quite interesting. But if you know more about it, I'd love to hear more about it from you. But other than that, guys, thanks a lot for watching and catch you later.